Eternal connection. There has always been a connection between me and Gabe. I was born only a few days after him, and our mothers were best friends in college. We grew up in the same neighborhood and went to the same school, so naturally, we were the best of friends. Sometimes, my mother would joke that Gabe and I knew each other better than our own mothers did. Not everything was sunshine and roses, though. We would often disagree and have terrible fights that would last days. We were born very stubborn kids and who were used to getting what we wanted, so it was prone to happen. Out of it, pure, innocent love was born. I was only seven years old when I realized that I would die for him. And I was 11 when I felt that I liked him more than I liked everyone else. I knew that when he was around, I was instantly happier. At first, I did not recognize the butterflies in my tummy as the first blooms of love. When I asked my sister, Leandra, what love feels like for her, since I was a nosy little person, she said, it feels like little happiness when they are around and a deep sadness when they are not there. At least that's what my friends say when they have crushes. I understood then that I had a crush on my best friend. When I was young, I didn't have any filters whatsoever, and I did not think before I said something. The consequences would come in later for all I cared. So then I went and I told him exactly what she had said to me about crushes. He seemed very interested in the topic. I think that makes sense. Ariana told me that she had a crush on me and she kissed me on the cheek the other day, he said. So then I kissed him on the cheek because I was de jealous of Ariana. We grew up at a time where there was not much exposure to the media and we found stuff either by accident or being told. I just knew that my best friend gave me butterflies. Our friendship continued, but there were small kisses on the cheek exchanged between us which we kept secret from everyone else. When I asked my brother about guys liking guys, she got a bit mad, and I didn't say anything about it again. When we were about 13, we had our first proper kiss. I remember feeling so warm and bubbly on the inside. It was also when I discovered that I did not like girls like the other guys did. They all had girlfriends, which barely lasted a day in most cases, but I did not want that. Gabe, on the other hand, gave in to the pressure, and suddenly, he was into girls. We did not discuss what had been passing between us until several years into the future. We ended up in high school, and that was the time when I decided to try dating guys, since I did not seem to like girls. I told him that he was the only person who knew about me being into guys. I guess we came to a silent agreement to support each other. I started dating another guy who I met at school. There was a gay community where we lived and I began to discover when we, there was a gay community where we lived that I began to discover when we first got older. That was where I would spend most of my time and where I started to love myself and accept myself. I met my first boyfriend who ended up breaking my heart there. Gabe had never liked him, um, of which became a thing that he did not like my boyfriends, which irritated me because I tolerated the girls he dated, even when he had to cancel our plans for them. I didn't say anything most of the time. When we got older, I would not forget my love for him. During those years, it evolved from childish, innocent love to desperate teen love. It was still yet to go through many stages. When we were in our senior year, we had a sleepover that changed things a lot for us. I was still in the closet due to my parents being homophobic, and it was the same with him. So no one else but him knew about me. We got into a fight because he was jealous of the new guy I'd been getting to know. Like most fight between us, it turned into a screaming match. While we were fighting, I let something that I had been keeping from him slip. Do you not think that I deserve love? 
Why are you always against who I date? I've lived through you dating multiple girls and you've broken my heart several times. So what is it with you? I shouted. He stopped shouting at me and then he began to cry. He thought that I hurt him, so I started to apologize, but he only pulled me in for an embrace. That he kissed me for the first time since we were 13 and everything flooded through me. My love for him was too much for me to handle and I needed to let the pent up feelings go somewhere. One thing led to another. We were suddenly tangled in his sheets with no clothes on. That night, there were no words between us, just beautiful actions. We made love for the whole night and it could not have been more perfect. When I was with him, I did not hesitate. Everything always came naturally. He was my first kiss, my first love, and the first man that I had sex with. He had me in any way that he wanted. That night brought a shift in our relationship. When I fell asleep, I felt as if I was going to burst from the love in my heart. The next morning, I refused to talk about what happened between us, so I let it go. But it was very painful to remember that night whenever I saw him. Because I could not blame him for making me feel this way. It was my choice to spend the night with him, knowing that he did not feel the same way. But it was difficult because we had changed. That night had changed us. And I did not know if it was for the better or worse. He would look at me most of the time and say things that made me believe there was hope for us. Yet, in the few months that we had at high school... We went back to experimenting like we had done as kids. We did not discuss the specifics of it, nor did we discuss our feelings. We were just intimate. I was scared to ask him about it because I knew he couldn't give me what I really wanted, which was his heart. I knew that he loved me a lot and it was a deep love. We could never be in a town like ours. So we finished high school and we went to college. We went to separate colleges and for the first time in our lives, we were separate and neither of us could cope. We came to a decision that we would just focus on being friends, which I was okay with because I didn't see much of a future with him. We get to us too much unresolved history. I didn't know if he was into me or if it was just a passing experiment and I was growing up to realize what I really deserve. In college, I was free to be who I wanted due to the way things were changing in the world for us. I met many guys who showed me true, genuine love, and I guess the pain from loving him faded into nothing, though we were still very good friends. When I finished my degree, I linked up with him again, and while we were catching up, he told me something very interesting. After you, I couldn't love anyone else, he said. What do you mean? You never loved me. We just ex experimented for a while and we never discussed feelings, I said. That's the thing. I always acted brave, but I was so scared. I couldn't be like you, who was slowly coming to terms with who you were. There was no space for me to be who I really wanted in my home, he said. How? Our home situations were very similar. I was quite puzzled. My father was abusive. When I was starting to try and experiment with my sexuality, he shut it down in a very violent way, he said. Oh, my, I can't even imagine what you were going through. We don't keep secrets from each other, though. Why did you keep this one? I asked. I was scared that after all those years, you would do something. I know that I would have if you were the one in that situation. He sighed, and he was right. Even after all those years, I would lay it all on the line for him. That was how much he meant to me. I'm sorry, and now do you know who you are? I asked. I came out to them months ago. When I heard that you had told yours I wanted to be brave like you, he smiled. My heart could not. 
The whole situation was so sad that I couldn't help thinking of all the lost time we would never get back. I love you even now. His, he said, his words got me teary and I had to look away for a bit so as not to start bawling. After all those years of loving him and learning to stop loving him, he also loved me. He had harbored that secret to protect the both of us and how I wished he had been forced to do that. I love you too. Even though you make decisions without consulting me sometimes, I chuckled. Things changed for the better after that. We had so much catching up to do and hopefully the rest of our lives to catch up. There was one problem. Each of our jobs required us to be in different cities. But we made it work. I was working in the publishing industry, which meant regular deadlines and barely any time to myself. But a few times a month, I visited him or he visited me. He worked in a big company as an IT technician, so he did understand what it was like to always be working. We had time on our side, since we did not have to go through the whole getting to know each other stage, since we already knew each other to the very last bit of our souls. We made the most of the few days a month that we got to be with each other by having fun. Sometimes we would do completely childish things that we used to do when we were younger. Most of the time, we went out and discovered something new together. After we had been together for six months, we got the news that his father had passed away. Drunk driving. We withdrew for a few days as he was processing what had befallen his family. But I was there for him each step of the way. He wasn't always like that. Sometimes he was the coolest dad ever, but other times he turned into a nasty man who hurt his family. He said to me after he came back from the funeral, people are complex, my dear. How are you feeling though? I said as I massaged his head. What happened with my dad made me realize something actually. What secret plot are you hatching, my dear? Well, since you asked nicely, Caleb, I was thinking of moving closer to where you are. I hate being apart from you. Oh, my sweetheart. I hate being apart from you too. Thank you for doing so much for me, I said. So then, a month later, you moved in with me, and it was the best decision we had ever made. For the most part, we already knew each other's bad habits, so there was no need to act perfect around each other. We worked around him not wanting to remove his shoes, and he went to the house, and I agreed to keep my tendency to be a neat freak in check. Our careers were also going well, with him finding a very good job and me moving up within the company. We had been dating for almost three years, when he surprised me with something I did not expect. It was my birthday, and since I did not like celebrating it, he got me a little cake, and we stayed indoors together. When I was cutting the cake, the knife got stuck on something wedged into it. I cut around it, and inside was a ring. If I could have married you the first night we made love, I would have. But alas, I was stupid enough to let you go. And I can't entertain the idea of you not being mine anymore. Will you marry me? He said. I kissed him passionately in response to his question. There was no one that I loved more than him. And there would never be anyone else. I love you so much. And I cannot wait until we are married. I told him. He smiled and pulled me close to him. I could hear the rapid beating of his heart through his sweater. When we made love, the connection I had with him made everything so much more intense. It was like I could feel his energy pulsing through me. And when he shouted that he loved me, it pushed me off the edge. I could never get tired of him, no matter how many times we were intimate. Just like I could never get tired of him saying he loves me scolding him to keep his damn shoes out of the house. It was those little things that made our love develop from desperate teen love to 
deep, mature love. I love you. Will you be mine forever? He asked. My heart will always be yours, for eternity, no matter what happens. I whispered as I fell asleep in his arms. We took our time planning the wedding and for about a year. And during that time, our families reached out to us. They explained that they had been raised in a different time, but if anything, they could not deny our love for each other. I felt really emotional when my family accepted me five years after we had no contact. It did take quite a long time to repair the broken relationships, but it was better than nothing. We got married a year after we got engaged in a really big ceremony. My sister had taken over and she wanted it to be the event of the year. But I didn't really care about how everything looked. Hell, I could have gotten married on top of a mountain or in the middle of the ocean as long as it was, as long as it was with him. We were now in our early 30s and it had taken us nearly our whole lives to get to that point. But it was worth it. Because we had to lose each other, grow up and find each other again. I knew deep within me that he was the one for me. There were no words to explain how I felt about him, but I love you was pretty close to describing it. I married my best friend, and a few months later, we started the process to adopt a child. Due to the many changes that had happened in the world, it was now possible for us to have a little one of our own. We adopted a baby boy who we named Gerard. He grew up to be quite the troublemaker, but he meant, well, he and his sister Annabelle pretty much kept Gabe and me young due to the amount of mischief they got up into. Our lives were not perfect, for we had to deal with fights, stress from work, and bereavements. But with each mountain we climbed, we became so much closer. What was important was raising our kids in a healthy environment and being them and being there for him, and being there for them through their milestones. We made sure that they knew that they could be whoever they wanted to be, and we would be proud of them. When I was younger, I never thought he would love me, but I was wrong. Love cannot be rushed or prolonged. It happens at whatever time it wants. It could happen today or in 10 years, but it can happen. When you meet that person, you cannot stop loving, despite the difficulties, the fights, and the time spent apart. You will not want to let go. I have not wanted to let go even once since we saw each other as small babies. We were destined. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and as always, stay wholesome.